epistle to be here in, in Vail, in Colorado. I'm going to read the epistle. Second St. Paul's letter to Corinthians, uh, chapter 1. Or first letter to Corinthians, chapter 5. Brethren, purge not the old leaven, that you may be a new paste, as you are unleavened. For Christ our past is sacrificed. Therefore let us feast not with the old leaven, not with the, not, but not with the leaves of malice, leaven of malice, but and wickedness. But with this unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The gospel. Saying that according to the gospel. Saying that according to St. Mark chapter 16. At that time, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought sweet spices that, that coming they might anoint Jesus. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came to the sepulcher, the sun being now risen. And they said one to another, Who shall roll us back, roll for us back the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And looking, they saw the stone rolled back, where it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young, a young man sitting on the right side, clothed with a white robe. And they were astonished, who said to them, Be not affrighted, who do seek Jesus of Nazareth, who is crucified? He is risen, he is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There you shall see him as he told you. But those were the words of today's holy gospel. Amen. Father, Son, and Most Amen. So a few considerations on this great feast of this holy Easter. And our Lord Jesus Christ conquered death conquered hell, and we discover a truth. When George Jesus Christ began his battle on Good Friday, he stood first, of course, only Thursday night, he had the Last Supper, he had the, the, the garden, he had said, the Last Supper, where he experienced the whole crucifixion in an unbloody manner. Then he went to three hours of agony in the garden, then he was met by the mob, and then he was brought before the authorities of this world. First, the authorities of God, Caiaphas and Annas, and they condemned him. And he told them that they would see him in power and majesty. Caiaphas was go with, decided that our Lord Jesus Christ was a blasphemer, and he needed to die, and our Lord said to him, You, Caiaphas, Thou shalt see the Son of Man coming in power and majesty. Caiaphas was the great high priest of the Old Testament. He was a true priest of God. And he should not have had to hear those words. He is the one who was supposed to tell the Jewish people that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He was the one that was supposed to tell the Jewish people that, he, that this Messiah is God and that he is coming to judge the living and the dead. He was supposed to announce the coming of the Lord. But instead, Caiaphas used his priesthood, and he was a true priest of the true church. And he used his, wicked, his priesthood for wickedness. And he did not believe in his priesthood. He did not believe that Jesus was God. He didn't believe it was the duty of the priest to announce the coming of the Lord. He didn't believe it at all. In fact, he hated our Lord when our Lord came. And he did not believe in the power of God. He believed in the power of money. He believed in the ways of the world. He believed in influence. He believed in all kinds of things. But he did not believe in the power of God. And therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ, during the entirety of the Passion, we hear these words over and over again. Et Jesus tachebat. Et Jesus tachebat. And Jesus Tachebat. And Jesus was remaining silent. And Jesus was remaining silent. And Jesus was remaining silent. They accused him of every conceivable, inconceivable sin under the sun. They threatened him in every way. And he was silent, and he was silent, and he was silent. But there was one thing he could not stand. And that is the high priest of God who is supposed to know what this world is about. 
The high priest of God is supposed to know this world is created by God and created for God, and he is a man of God. He is the only man in the whole world, in the Old Testament, who was allowed to go inside the Holy of Holies. And he who went inside the Holy of Holies once a year and spent a great deal of time there did not know anything about the Holy of Holies. He didn't understand the power of God. And this angered Christ. And he was silent, and he was silent, and he was silent. But then he boiled over with anger. And he said, Thou Caiaphas, you with your priestly eyes that don't believe in the priesthood. Right now there are thousands and thousands of priests throughout the world. Especially those priests called bishops. And the priest who is called the Bishop of Rome or the Holy Father. And the regular priests of the world, they see Jesus Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. They see the Word of God in sacred scripture and our holy breviary and in the Missal. And they don't believe in the power of the Word of God. And they don't believe in the power of the flesh, the body and the blood and the soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. God the Son physically on the altar. And they don't believe that God has power. This angers heaven. He's silent before all kinds of sins. But then what happens? He breaks his silence. He says with power and majesty. Imagine the power with which these words came forth from Jesus Christ. As he had soldiers either side of him. As he was filled with a bloody sweat. As he was wounded and beaten. And as they were about to take him to be crucified. He looked so weak. And then he stood with power. And it caused the shaking of all those around him. And he pointed to Caiaphas and he said, Thou Caiaphas, with your priestly eyes, which you don't believe in anymore, you shall see the Son of Man coming with power and majesty to rule and to judge all mankind. You know that when God comes at the end of the world, every human being is going to be brought to the valley of Joseph Acts. Who shall see him first? It shall be the priest. Not everyone that sees him as a priest is going to be filled with great joy. For Caiaphas' eyes are now rotted in the grave. But before the resurrection, before the end of the world comes, those eyes of that Caiaphas, whose soul now burns in hell, they shall be placed back into his body with perfect 2020 vision. He shall be brought forth from the grave, and he shall be at the valley of Josephat, and he shall look with his eyes, those same eyes that saw Jesus Christ on Good Friday in the morning, in the very early morning, a little after midnight, when he should not have had a trial. In the darkness of the night, before candlelight, he saw Jesus Christ. He will see him with absolute clarity. And the priest will see that Christ has come. He shall see first. This is one reason why, when priests go to hell, they will burn so much more than regular souls. They will hurt so much more, and especially in their eyes, and in their tongues, and in their hands, and in their feet. Their eyes are meant to see the glory of God. They were meant to take it inside of their head. It was meant to come out in their preaching with their tongues. It was meant to be carried with their hands to the ends of the earth, and with blessing and healing be carrying by their feet. But instead they did not see, they blinded themselves. And because of their blindness, their hands did sin and wickedness. Their feet were vehicles that carried Satan. And their tongues spoke wicked lies. These are the ways of most priests. And they shall be the first ones to see Christ coming in power and majesty at the end of the world. And our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt see, and you are going to hear you are going to hear the words of God 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son in his human flesh, speaking with great anger at the priest of God that has been unfaithful, at the priest of God that has denied the faith and been a scandal to souls and led souls to hell. And instead of seeing the things of God, he has seen the things of the flesh. He has seen greed. He has seen impurity. He has seen the desires of the world. He has seen all things except God. His eyes shall see God, but with fear and trepidation. And what about the apostles? They shall also see and hear. The angel at the tomb this morning, when the holy woman come to the tomb, not knowing that Jesus Christ is risen, that he is not there. The, the great angel tells them, he is risen, he's not here. But go and tell Peter and the apostles. Go tell the apostles and St. Peter that he is risen. They need to know. I told them I would rise and now I have risen. And now they believe and they understand. When they come and touch my hand, put their hands into my side. When they see me eat fish later on this day. When they watch me pass through a door. And I will be with them in their very presence. And when I walk into their presence and pass through a door, they will be filled with an exceeding great joy that cannot be experienced by anyone other than an apostle. All of us have moments of joy in our life. But none can have the joy of those 11 men when in fear and trepidation and insecure and not knowing what to do, they were locked up in the upper room. And then what happened? They saw Jesus Christ in the flesh. And they touched him. And they watched him eat fish. And they heard him breathe upon them and tell them they would have the power to forgive sins. This was the greatest of joys. And he's heard, they heard him say, My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, but I give. And this peace no man can take from you. And now they receive that peace. The angel tells them it's going to happen. Go, you holy women, and tell those priests that everything that Jesus Christ said to them shall be accomplished. And from this day forward, there's no more excuse for priests. We must understand that whatever our Lord Jesus Christ has said, whatever heaven has spoken, it must be accomplished. Maybe the sun will not rise tomorrow. Maybe the mountains will cease. But whatever word has come forth from the mouth of Jesus Christ to his God-man, whatever word cometh forth from the infallible teaching of this mystical body, our Holy Mother of the Church, whatever word is contained in the most wonderful sacred scripture written by the Holy Ghost, these words are most certain and they are most true. And it is our duty to speak these words to all souls throughout the entire world. Our Lord Jesus Christ on the day of the crucifixion is going to, of the resurrection is going to strengthen his apostles. He's going to give them the power to be able to carry his word. Though priests have been so bad, and so many priests have been so wicked. And through priests, wickedness has come into the world. But now he's going to give power to these men that they might carry goodness into the world, that they might carry charity in the world, that they might carry truth in the world, and the truth is Jesus Christ. Hence, when our Lord Jesus Christ stood before Pilate, he broke his silence another time. Art thou a king then? He was silent about so many questions. But when he was asked if he was God, he said, Thou sayest it, I am. If he was asked if he was a judge, he said, Thou sayest it, I am, and I shall judge. Priests can be silent about many things, but they should never be silent about our God, who is God, and our King, who is King. Thou sayest it, I am a King, for this was I born, for this came I into the world, that I might bear witness unto the truth, and whoever is of the truth hears my voice. That's what our Lord said. The voice that he said to his apostles, who hears you, hears me. Let my voice speak through these weak apostles. 
Let my voice speak through these priests of my holy church, who must be the voice to speak my words until the end of time. Go and show yourselves to the priest. He said so many times in the gospel. Go show yourselves to the priest. Have you been cured? Are you grateful? One of the many, many teachings of the sacred scripture against the Protestants. A man was cured by Jesus Christ himself. A man's leprosy was taken away. A man was made no longer, no longer lame by Jesus Christ himself. And what did he say? You, go show yourselves to the priest and fulfill the law of Moses. Go show yourself to the priests. He made it necessary that there be priests. And we must pray for the conversion of priests and priests to come back to the full moon of their duty. And they must be communicators of the truth. The truth is Jesus Christ. And he is the king. And therefore Pilate understood that. And therefore when it became time to crucify him, he said, who is being crucified? The Roman Pilate, a pagan, who doesn't know anything about religion. Who's being crucified? His name is Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. He is a king who's being crucified. He's being crucified because he's king. He's a God who's being crucified. The only God. The only true God. And he's being crucified because he's God. And hence the most normal death for the priest is to be crucified because he preaches that Jesus Christ is God and the only God and all other so-called gods are devils. And because he must preach that Jesus Christ is king, and all other so-called kings are nothing, all power they have only comes from he who is the king of kings and lord of lords. And this will so often lead to the death of the priest, so often lead to crucifixion and martyrdom. And if not a bloody martyrdom, then an unbloody martyrdom. But this is the normal way, and this is the great glory, to be able to follow our master to death, to follow our master to the cross, preaching the word of God. We believe what is said. Go and tell Peter and the apostles all the things that he said to you, they're going to happen. And he's going to meet them in Galilee. Go to Galilee. Go to the very ends of the earth. Carry Christ to all places. Our Lord Jesus Christ on this day of the resurrection has defeated death. He has defeated hell. He has defeated all the enemies. Not just the enemies of God, but the enemies of his friends, the enemies of all his sheep, the enemies of the least little ones, he has defeated them all, and he will make sure that we are all taken care of, like unto the apple of his eye. That's what it says in the sacred scripture. I will watch over you like unto the apple of my eye. I shall not let the slightest harm come to thee. And that is what he shall do for those that love him. Let us love our Lord with all our hearts, and be faithful to him, and persevere in our holy faith, on this great day of the resurrection. And God bless you all then. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.